Hello, I'm Erin Halverson, and welcome to Ride Rugs by Erin. This is your first video that you're watching me, then welcome, and those that you've watched me in the past, thank you for joining me again. Um, we're going to be talking today about how to make sheet yarn in one long strip. So we have several other videos on my YouTube channel that actually um, talk about different techniques in doing sheet yarn, but I've come across um, from Betsy. She gave me some info on this, and um, I realized I was actually doing it with the plarn, which is the plastic yarn, but I hadn't been applying it to the sheets. So um, we're going to go ahead and jump right in and talk about the tools that you'll need, and um, this may be a very helpful and video that will help you save a lot of time on making your sheet, sheet yarn for your rag rugs. So, uh, and this is sheet yarn. If you're not familiar with the, what sheet yarn is, this is... Um, we're going to use this as yarn and it's made out of, this one is made out of fabric because I'm going to be making something that um, doesn't require sheets, but the newest of it is used with sheets um, or t-shirts you can do as well. So this is what we're talking about so you know what the end product is that we're going to be um, trying to shoot for. So the tools that you're going to need in this video is a sewing machine. I'm not going to show you the seam making. If you own a sewing machine, you know how to make a seam. So there's no need for me to actually show you how to make the seam. Um, we're also going to be using possibly this mat. I'm going to show you how to use a self-healing mat and um, the ruler that grabs a hold of it to keep your line straight and the rotary cutter. Okay, And make sure that these are all good quality. And then here's a pair of scissors. If you do not have the self-healing mat, the um, the ruler that guides you to keep the line straight, or your rotary cut. Those are more expensive tools. And if you watch me in the past, you know that we use a lot of recycled things and very inexpensive because I like to make this craft available for all people. So um, I don't want that to be a stumbling block if you don't have those type of things because they are more expensive. Very helpful and useful tools, but they are more expensive. I'm going to show you also how to just use a pair of scissors that you can still get this done with a sewing machine and a pair of scissors. So make sure that you continue to watch and I'll show you that as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. If Mr. Cameraman, you can look down here. And Mr. Cameraman is my husband, Lyle. I get lots of comments about that because I call him Mr. Cameraman. Um, he's my husband of 28 years, and uh, he's the one that uh, makes this all feasible for me and for you by him getting all these great shots. So uh, my husband, Lyle. All right, so Lyle, if you could come over here and look at this. Um, we're going to have... The first thing you're going to do is you're going to make a seam. Okay, you're going to take your sheets, trim off all the extra excess things on it. You're going to turn your material, whether it's material or sheets, you're going to turn it inside out. If you happen to be doing this with a t-shirt, you could just leave it the way it is. We're going to be making it in one long circle. So when you make the seam, you can see that it's open here. I can get this open to show you. See, it's open here and open on the other side, and here's the bottom of it. Okay? So you're going to make a seam however much you want, you know, whether it's a quarter inch or a half inch or whatever is good. You can see that I really went fast on my machine. What I found after doing more research on this, that one seam a lot of times was not good enough because it was coming undone once I did the cutting. So I don't you can see I had a straight edge, a straight seam rather, and then I came back with a zigzag, but I really forced my machine, machine to do it really quick because I wanted it quick, so it's crossing over. If you don't have a zigzag, just do two straight seams. Make sure that they cross over periodically. Um, so I'm not a master sewer, and so that's easy for me to do. They're going to cross because I'm just not that good. However, many of you may be quite a uh, seamstress but you're going to need to make sure you cross over. Another thing you can do is make sure that you make it smaller stitches. Don't make it really large stitches or you're going to have a problem later on down the road. So try to avoid that. So first thing you're going to do is after you have this piece of material and it's basically a big continuous circle, you're going to take your seam and make sure your material is inside out. It makes it a little easier. You're going to make sure it's going to fit on your mat. Now I did it the first several times and left it in a big long piece of material. It just kept on dragging it and pulling it and making it more difficult. So I did the trimming before we got to this point because I just want to get to the technique. You can kind of play with it and see how comfortable you are one way or the other. So you line it up on your mat. Find some kind of line. It doesn't have to be exact. 
but you do want to try to get your line straight on the side. You're going to leave it two to four inches down. This is important. When you start, I started doing it, and I was teaching someone else uh, last weekend how to do this, and when they were doing it, they were thinking they were helping themselves by moving this seam up all the way up here, and it ends up being when you do the technique of cutting it all in one strong strip, you get a kind of a jagged, sharp corner. So try to leave enough space like this between these two. You're going to take your straight edge. You can do whatever size strip that you're working on. This is going to happen to be a one and a half because I'm using a Q-hook on this project and I want it a little bit bigger than a one and a quarter to one and a half. And my next project I'm going to be doing a two inch. So whatever it is you're doing or whatever you're comfortable with after you've done some sheet yarn, you just make it any way you want. So I'm going to line it up. Make sure you push down. And the rotary cutter, mine only goes one way. So yours may go both ways, but mine only goes one way. You're going to push down. You're going to make a nice cut. Push down hard. And go just past right there where the laps over. So I'm going to go on to the next place. I'm just going to do a couple of these. I'm not going to cut through the whole thing. I'm just going to show you again how to do this. And then we're going to go on to using the scissors. Okay, so here I've got a couple strips. So this is, this is what, and you would continue on with the whole thing. Now I'm going to sit down quickly and show you, and by the way, when I ran this seam, I didn't do it inside out, so it's not as good as it could be, but you know, this will show you that you can still do it if it doesn't come out. You make a little mistake. It's not the end of the world. You just make adjustments. Okay, so if you do not have a cutter, uh, you know, a rotary cutter, you don't have all this equipment, that's more than fine. Here's another technique, and you're just going to eyeball it. This project, I'm doing a little bit more than an inch and a half because the project I'm using this material for, I'm requiring it a little bit more. So I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to hold it up. and cut it all the way up, again, just past that material. I found that I kind of even actually sat down watching TV, held it up, and it was nice. And just cut it, trying to hold it. As long as you have a good quality pair of scissors, this is fine. Sometimes people will try to save money on things that aren't worth saving money on. I'm a big saver of money and being cautious with my money. However, if you're going to do this, you need to have a good pair of scissors. So you would continue on, and that's what you would do. So this is what the product that you're looking for. This is all just done with scissors. That's a neat, fine way to do it as well. Okay, so I don't want you to not be able to um, do this if you don't have the cutter. All right. This is what you end up with. I already have this all cut. And you have your seam on the top. Okay? We're going to put our hand, our arm. Now, if you saw my Plarn um, video to show how to make plastic yarn, I did the same thing only with a plastic bag, bread, bread and bagel bags. So here, you put your arm in here, and you've kind of got this little backbone or ridge that's going to go along your hand and you've got all your strips hanging down here. This is how it comes in. Now you flip your hand around and you can see here's the top and here's the bottom. Or the, this is the top and that's the bottom. So the first thing you're going to do is to get this all in one long strip. It, picture in your mind almost like a spiral on a notebook is what we're going to be coming. If you could pull that spiral all the way out, that would then in turn um, be one long strip and it goes kind of on an angle. So we're going to go ahead and cut this on an angle, making sure that we cut it in one long strip. The first cut is the most important one. Okay? I'm going to do this very slow so I don't have to do it repeatedly for you, and you can just rewind it if you need to see it again. Okay, so you're going to start from this seam, and you're going to cut at an angle up to the back one. See, this is the front here to the back one. Up like this at an angle to undo that. Okay, see how that's undone? Let it drop. Okay, all of these are going to be cut from right to left. I'm right-handed. Maybe left-handed you'll have to do something a little different. But from right to left, you're going to start from the bottom where it's cut, and you're going to now cut across at an angle to the right there. 
I'm going to do the whole thing. So from this bottom, at an angle, over to this one. You do the whole thing, just drop them off. I'm also going to talk at the very end about the advantages and disadvantages of using one long strip. I still am do ripping some of mine because it is so nice to be able to have the versatility. See here, I missed a little bit. It didn't quite go through on the cutter. No big deal. Just help it out a little bit. Again, from here on an angle all the way up. The advantages and disadvantages, I'll talk about that after so your mind can concentrate on that part of it. We're just going to keep doing this at an angle. You see how I'm dropping them? Just moving it along. Once you get this, I'm trying to go slower for you. You can just zip right on through this. This is quite easy. To have a nice long strip and not have to keep on attaching it and stopping is a really nice thing. Um, also, it makes quick work of it. And um, to me, the least enjoyable thing about rug making is making the, the sheet yarn or the t-shirt yarn in order to do my project. So um, sometimes people just say, oh, I don't want to make that sheet yarn, and so they don't do the other part of the rug because they're um, not enjoying themselves. Okay, so here we are at the end, and you can see we've still got this thing. We're going to do this one from here to that seam. You know how we started the other one from this seam up? We're going to take it from here and just go to that seam. Okay? So there's your big long strip, and you can see this long, continuous. Okay, here's where it's attached still. Take your little scissors because I didn't cut all the way through. Trim it off. You've got this long piece of one long strip. Those of you who are already making sheet yarn another way, you're going to say, huh? I've been doing it the long way. Okay, so this is a great little other technique. Please feel free to continue to just rip them or cut them the other way. There's nothing wrong with that, and I still will continue to do some of that as well. But this is a great technique. Let me show you how to ball this up um, before we were doing things really quick, and then I find that later on when it, sits, it wrinkles the material more, So uh, or the sheets. So what I do when I'm doing mine, and I've seen other people that they just continually make it like this, but you're going to want to use, you're going to move the material instead of flipping the material over it. You're going to move your material itself, keeping it flat. It doesn't matter if you then go another direction. It doesn't matter if you have, some people will continue. I've seen them almost like jelly rolls. They're all in a big roll. Um, and for some reason they prefer that technique. I haven't seen the advantages um, to that. To me it makes storing a little bit more difficult. I like to be able to just check my sheet yarn somewhere. Um, I also like looking at them in a basket or a bowl. I think they look pretty. So um, I don't like to uh, do that. It makes it a little bit more difficult for me. But you, of course, can do it any way you want. I'm only showing you the techniques that I enjoy and that I like. I don't have a corner on knowing everything about rag rugs. I'm just uh, passing along the information that I do. Okay, so now that you see that we're doing it like this, and you can see here's the place that it joined, just a little bit of a jog, not much at all. So that's a really good thing. The advantages and disadvantages. The, disadvan the advantages, of course, you have all one long strip and you can move along quickly. The disadvantage would be you're going to have to periodically cut your sheet yarn because you want it to stop in a different location. Um, another thing is if you make it in a longer, I'm not going to make mine in the future in real long strips because I like these smaller um, little one pieces to work with. Because if you're going to attach it, like with the no-sew method, if you watch my other video on the no-sew sheet yarn, that shows you how to attach the material by making a couple slips and pushing it through. You can't put this whole ball through with a no-sew. So you need to, you're going to have to cut it off periodically. If I leave it in the smaller section and then make my next piece like that and then wrap it over it as well, but not attach it to this, when I talk about a no-sew um, sheet yarn trip, tips, um, I talk about doing that. You're going to have several pieces not attached. 
um, and it makes it easier to add. So that's going to be um, the disadvantage if you you have to cut it. Some people, oh, I just made all this and now I've got to cut it. If you're making something that's just little pieces of stuff because that's the look that you're going for, this may not be the greatest technique for you. But a lot of us are making bigger rugs. And if you look, this is what this is going to go on actually. And a lot of times I show you. See, this has got, this was a twin sheet. And I used the whole twin sheet in here. Well, to leave that in one long strip, I didn't switch. So that would be a perfect situation. This is a bigger rug. Um, this is actually going in someone's bathroom who has a large bathroom and has two other lavender rugs that I've made for them. So um, that will be joining them. And uh, perfect for Easter too, isn't it? And we've got Easter coming up. So thank you for joining me. And um, join me again for my next video. I've got a really interesting, different thing I'm teaching next time. That will probably be out in uh, two to six weeks. So uh, thank you for joining me. And uh, push uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you.